Kingdom Hearts story drives me wild. Spanning 14 games over 20 years, the delicious mixture of possession, soul cloning, and time travel can push even the most dedicated lore master to tears. But fret not, friend. For those looking to get into the series, or for a quick refresher before Kingdom Hearts 4, I'm here to get you up to speed. This is JT at RPG Informer, and today I'll be doing a timeline of all Kingdom Hearts games, from Birth by Sleep to Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind. Ready? Let's begin. Union Cross The story of Kingdom Hearts centers around the titular Kingdom Hearts, a giant heart in the sky that houses people's hearts, souls really, and grants tremendous power to anyone that unlocks it with the singular Keyblade. Following an ancient conflict termed the Keyblade War, the Keyblade shattered into 20 shards, 13 of darkness and 7 of light, scattering worlds apart. However, thousands of years before the events of Kingdom Hearts 1, in the Age of Fairy Tales, the world was divided between light and darkness, with the fully formed continent comprising the singular Realm of Light. While the world was rattled by a cosmic battle between light and dark, a mysterious cloaked figure known as the Master of Masters sought to defeat the darkness for good by vanquishing seven heroes of the dark far in the future. To achieve their fanatical ends, the Master of Masters worked through their pawns, Lushu and the five foretellers, with each foreteller running their own union, or guild. For each union, the foretellers recruited Keyblade Builders under the pretense of preventing a world-shattering conflict. However, the Master of Masters deceived them into thinking one of the groups was an imposter, leading the Keyblade Wielders to doubt and eventually fight one another in the Keyblade War. Following the aftermath of the conflict in the area that would come to be known as the Keyblade Graveyard, the Realm of Light was shattered into separate worlds, and the Keyblade broken into 20 shards. However, despite the destruction, several survivors of the Unions took refuge in Maleficent's Ark, awakening far in the future. Among the survivors, Ventus goes on to get abducted by an evil teacher named Xehanort, Lorium and Elrena survive but become nobodies, eventually joining the sinister Organization 13, and have their name changed to Marluxia and Larxene. And Ephraim goes on to found Kala Ed Scalum and teach future Keyblade wielders. Meanwhile, our player character sacrifices themselves to contain four beings of darkness, and is reincarnated as Xehanort, the overarching antagonist of Kingdom Hearts. Dark Road Thousands of years after the Keyblade War, the story shifts to a young Xehanort, the later elderly antagonist of the series, being plagued by visions of his lost friends from Union Cross, and brooding over his isolation on Destiny Islands. To break up his monotony, a hooded villain, possibly Ansem, Seeker of Darkness, a version of Xehanort from the far future, offers him a chance to leave the islands, transporting him to the Keyblade city of Kala Ed Skyloom. After his arrival, Xehanort is inducted into the Keyblade Academy, where he befriends a youthful Ericus and several other promising students. After becoming a Keyblade wielder and gaining a determination to battle the darkness, one of the Keyblade students, Alder, goes missing after the death of his sister, prompting the presiding teacher to send Xehanort and company to bring him back. However, throughout their adventures battling the darkness of the Queen of Hearts and Maleficent's dragon, Xehanort's companions begin to perish, forcing Xehanort to grapple with his mission and the nature of light and dark. Eventually, Xehanort and Ericus finally find a crazed Baldur who has ended several other classmates and intends to exact justice for his dead sister. While Xehanort and Ericus succeed in thwarting the maddened student, the teacher takes a personal role in Baldur's demise, leaving Xehanort more dubious and distrustful of Keyblade wielders. After mourning the loss of his comrades and burrowing deeper into doubt, the Master of Masters saves Xehanort during a trip through the darkness, encouraging him to think for himself and use darkness to his own ends. Following this conversion to the dark, and over many years, Ericus and Xehanort's relationship begins to decline, leading the two to battle as adults, leaving Ericus with lasting scars and their friendship in tatters. After their estrangement, however, Xehanort stumbles upon an amnesic Ventus from Union Cross that's been sent forward in time. Seeing the potential in using Ventus to achieve his ends, Xehanort begins to plot. Birth by Sleep 
Now, an evil old man, Xehanort seeks to reforge the Keyblade and usher in an era of darkness. Yes, very metal. To achieve his depraved ends, Xehanort intends to possess his younger protege, Ventus, to preserve his life. However, Ventus refused to give in to his darkness, compelling Xehanort to extract his darkness, creating Ventus's evil doppelganger, Vanitas. Xehanort then dumps a vegetative Ventus onto Master Ericus, Xehanort's old friend on the guise of feeling bad and wanting to reconnect. While he's healing, Ventus befriends two youths, Terra and Aqua. The youths then travel to Destiny Islands and impart Keyblade knowledge to younger versions of Riku, Sora, and Kairi. Later on, Ericus learns of Ventus' origins and plans to end the youth to derail Xehanort's evil schemes. However, upon learning of his master's intent, Terra murders Master Ericus to save Ventus. What a violently loyal friend. Inspired by the violent student's wrath, Xehanort antagonizes Terra, compelling him to battle the elderly villain. Terra wins, but is possessed in the process, becoming Terra Xehanort. Meanwhile, Ventus battles his evil doppelganger and dies, causing his heart to float in Sora and Aqua to carry his unconscious body to Castle Oblivion. After doing her best for Ventus, Aqua battles Terra Xehanort, and in heroic sacrifice, Aqua thwarts Xehanort's plans, giving the possessed figure amnesia at the cost of casting herself into the Realm of Darkness. After waking with amnesia, Terra Xehanort, now just called Xehanort, gets recruited by a team of researchers led by Ansem the Wise. Ansem then expositions on the legendary power of Keyblades, and how people's metaphysical hearts can be separated from their bodies, turning the souls into unfeeling monsters called nobodies, and the bodies into evil black entities termed Heartless. However, characters with strong enough wills can resist this change, essentially turning into sentient, albeit emotionless, husks of their former selves. Following this exposition dump, Xehanort then banishes Ansem to a realm of darkness, converts the remaining researchers into nobodies, the later become Organization 13, and divides himself into two versions, Xemnas and Ansem, Seeker of Darkness. Kingdom Hearts 1 Ten years later, the first game in the series centers around the older babies of the first game, Sora, Riku, and Kairi. After living their best life devouring coconuts and consuming fish on Destiny Islands, Darkness invades the tiny landmass. In the commotion, Kairi's heart ends up inside of Sora, Maleficent captures Riku, and Sora receives a Keyblade before getting sucked into another world. Transported to the world of Traverse Town, Sora is joined by Disney characters Goofy and Donald Duck, two legendary warriors tasked with assisting the wielder of the Keyblade. Together, the trio goes on several misadventures, fighting back hordes of encroaching Heartless through Disney worlds until they confront Maleficent and Ansem. Maleficent succeeds in corrupting Riku, thereby allowing Ansem to take possession of the vulnerable youth and compel Riku to fight Sora and bravely steal the Keyblade. Oh no! After some battling, we discover that the two villains have captured six princesses, plus a soulless Kairi, which they intend to sacrifice for the seven guardians of light. While the prophecy calls for seven noble warriors of light, princesses work well in a pinch. Go figure. Rather than let Kairi get sacrificed, Sora uses his Keyblade to free Kairi's soul from his body. However, Sora promptly becomes a Heartless, also creating a nobody that later goes off to become Roxas, the newest member of Organization 13 that plays a part in the coming games. After waking, Kairi hugs Sora's Heartless, turning Sora back into a person through the power of friendship. Now back together, the two track down Ansem and foil his evil scheme. But before they succeed, Ansem opens the doors to Kingdom Hearts, only to get destroyed by a beam of light. On the other side, the two reconnect with the restored Riku and Mickey Mouse. Together, the groups close the doors to prevent further incursions of darkness. At its end, the characters are separated once more, with Riku fighting back the darkness, Kairi trapped back on Destiny Islands, and Sora wandering the stars with Goofy and Donald. Chain of Memories Following the events of Kingdom Hearts 1, Chain of Memories expositions on the mysterious Organization 13. Led by Xemnas, Xehanort's nobody, the organization is made of 13 nobodies seeking to find their bodies and become whole once again. 
Putting aside Xemnas' intent on using all 13 as sacrifices to unlock Kingdom Hearts, the group will split between two factions intent on dominating the other. The first faction, led by Marluxia, or Lorium from Union Cross, seeks to use Sora to overthrow Xemnas using Naminé, Kairi's Nobody, to rewrite Sora's memories, while the other faction plan to use a corrupted doppelganger of Riku to quell the opposition. While Sora battles against this doppelganger, Riku fights throughout the castle and defeats Xemnas. At its conclusion, however, Naminé traps Sora in stasis so he can regain his nobody, Roxas, remember, and become whole once again. Kingdom Hearts 365 over 2 Taking place before and during the events of the previous title, 365 over 2 follows Roxas, Sora's wayward nobody from Kingdom Hearts 1, bonding with two of Organization 13's members, spiky-haired Axel and Xion, a backup of Sora. After the three spend time bonding over ice cream cones, Roxas and Xion inherit Sora's memories, throwing him into a coma. Xion forces Roxas to kill her so Sora can reawaken, compelling Roxas to open Kingdom Hearts so he can save Xion. Before he can succeed, however, Riku ambushes Roxas, leading to a fight concluding with Ansem the Wise throwing Roxas into Twilight Realms, a digitized version of reality, basically a QC version of the Matrix. Kingdom Hearts 2 Roxas awakens in the digital realm of Twilight Town with Amnesia and is slowly going through the motions until Axel invades the world to bring him out. After learning of his origins, Roxas enters Sora's sleeping body, waking the youth with no recollection of Roxas. Upon reviving, Sora seeks to wipe out the remainder of Organization 13 and deliver the killing blow to Xemnas. After battling through several members, Ansem the Wise, back for vengeance, and Riku hop in to help Sora finish the fight. Following a frantic victory, Kairi uses her heart connection with Sora to create a portal transporting the three back to Destiny Island. Finally, after all the violence, turmoil, and anime battles, our three heroes are reunited. Kingdom Hearts Recoded and Dream Drop Distance Unfortunately, this period of Ice Cream Cone peace is short-lived, as darkness reinvades Destiny Islands, leading the trio to flee. Also, we discover in Kingdom Hearts Recoded that just as defeating a nobody causes its soul to return to its body, so does the split versions of Xehanort and Organization 13 revive, with their bodies and souls intact. After making it to a safe space and receiving a lengthy explanation from Mickey Mouse and a long talk with wizard Yen Sid, it's Disney spelled backwards. Very clever. Sora and Riku embark to learn the power of waking, to prepare for the final battle against Xehanort. After a lengthy adventure through multiverses and battling against younger versions of Xehanort through time travel, Riku succeeds and Sora fails. Kingdom Hearts 3 Still determined to learn the power of waking so it can free the remaining hearts inside of his body, currently Ventus, Roxas, and Xion, Sora embarks on an epic Disney-flavored quest to evict the people living inside of him. After traveling with Donald and Goofy through several Disney worlds, Sora comes to learn of the real Organization 13, a group composed of young Xehanorts obtained through time travel, dark replicants of the original cast of characters, a few remainders of the old Organization 13, and Xehanort's bestie, Zigbar. Meanwhile, a corrupted version of Aqua returns from the darkness, rightfully angry after being trapped fighting the darkness for 10 years, and attacks Riku. Conveniently, Sora plops out of a portal and helps his best friend beat the darkness out of Aqua. After her restoration, the two travel to the land of departure to put Ventus' soul back into his lifeless body. Just after Ventus' evil doppelganger, Vanitas ambushes them, however, Ventus reawakens and beats Vanitas to a Disney-approved pulp. With the seven heroes of light finally assembled, Sora, Riku, Kairi, Ventus, Aqua, Axel, and Mickey Mouse, of course, the group embarks to fight Xehanort's group in the Keyblade Graveyard. After fighting through hordes of Heartless and temporarily dying to possess Terra, the seven heroes of light finally confront the 13 warriors of the dark. Rather than duke it out, Xehanort summons a gigantic maze, forcing Sora to methodically take out several members of Organization 13. Notably, Terra is excised of Xehanort, Riku's good doppelganger wipes the floor with his evil one, and Zigbar fakes his death during the fight. 
Then, Xion appears as the final member of the real Organization 13. Luckily, Roxas was restored into a digital body, and Sora freed Xion's heart from his body with the power of waking, so any fighting between the old friends is averted. As the heroes near their moment of victory, Xehanort kidnaps Kairi and kills her, provoking Sora into murdering the remaining members of Organization 13. Unfortunately, killing those remaining members allows Xehanort to finish rebuilding the original Keyblade, summon Kingdom Hearts, and convert it into darkness. With everything destroyed and all hope lost, Sora and the gang enter Xehanort and engage in an epic anime battle to end it all. After their victory, Master Ericus' spirit that's been hiding inside of Terra the whole time escapes to convince Xehanort, his old friend, of the folly of his ways and do the darkness, returning everything back to normal. Xehanort then follows Master Ericus off into the sunset, leaving the Heroes of Light finally victorious against Xehanort's evil schemes. Fortunately, it's then revealed that Maleficent, who's been working together with Pete to uncover a buried box, has succeeded in digging up a relic from the Master of Masters all the way back in Union Cross to use for nefarious dark plans. To make matters worse, she's joined by Zigbar, Xehanort's evil Eidpatch sidekick, who survived Sora's beating and is revealed to be Lushu, also from Union Cross, who summons the Foretellers, likely plotting an evil scheme to foil the Heroes of Light, something we can anticipate in Kingdom Hearts 4. While most of the three hero groups have been reunited, for example, Ventus, Aqua, and Terra, Xion, Axel, and Roxas, Kairi is still dead, leaving a grieving Sora to make a plucky attempt to save Kairi's life by ending his life and entering the Keyblade Graveyard. Kingdom Hearts Remind Following his entrance to the Keyblade Graveyard, Sora travels back in time through his friend's hearts to find and save Kairi. After fighting several versions of Xehanort, he successfully returns her to Destiny Islands before he vanishes. Later, led by a saved Kairi and Anton the Wise, the remaining group venture to save Sora by battling members of Organization 13 and reading their memories. Ultimately, their efforts lead them to the Fairy Godmother and Yen Sid, who convince them to explore the dreams of Kairi, Riku, and an unnamed girl. Focusing back on Sora, who's been transported to an alternate Tokyo, our plucky hero battles a character named Yorza. Regardless of who wins, Yorza wakes up in a car driven by Zigbar, with both Sora and Yorza's voices narrating Sora's starting dialogue line at the beginning of Kingdom Hearts 1, questioning what's real and what's not. Melody of Memories Determined to find Sora, Kairi explores the memories within her own heart with the help of Ansem the Wise and company. After fighting through a phantom of Xehanort, Kairi talks to a younger version of Terra Xehanort and discovers that Sora's been sent to a fictional realm, likely housing the Master of Masters as well. After reconvening with Mickey, Yen Sid, and Riku, Mickey decides to head to Kalum Ed Scalum to research, Kairi decides to train under Master Aqua, and Riku makes a plucky attempt to reach his fictional realm of Quadratum and save Sora. And with that inconclusive note, we come to the end of the current story of Kingdom Hearts. Whether Sora can find his way home remains to be seen, so let's munch on some ice cream and get ready for Kingdom Hearts 4. See you soon!